Let's start with USC because USC is in the top 10 and a lot of us had a lot of questions surrounding USC. Now, if you go back to the preseason, what did I and many others talk about in terms of USC? We were excited to see Caleb Williams play again. Obviously, we wanted to see some of those new pieces on offense, how they were going to fit for uh, Lincoln Riley in that offense. But more specifically, I wanted to see the defense. Is the defense going to improve? Is this a defense that is no longer allergic to tackling, as I like to put it in the preseason? Um I don't know if we got definitive answers about the defense. I don't want to go either direction. I saw headlines here in the Southern California area from major outlets that basically the defense is not fixed at all. And others saying like, oh, no, look at some of these individual snaps. This defense is going to be great. I'm not going to fall in either one of those camps because I think that there's still a lot to be learned about USC. Let's just back up and kind of go through them one at a time. First and foremost, they allowed 28 points to San Jose State. Now, San Jose State isn't bad. Let's just like, let's call a spade a spade. They were not nearly as bad offensively as like Navy was against Notre Dame. They, they had some guys, all right, and, and they made a few plays. And so from that standpoint, I think USC had a, had a tougher draw in their over opening week rather than Notre Dame. But it's not a comparison apples to apples. So what you have to do is you've got to look at some of these you know transfers. They started four of them on defense. They had a true freshman out there as well. So there's a lot of new names. Um, I thought Mason Cobb played well. Bear played well at times. The main takeaway from me was that I thought the defense showed signs that they could be better. I didn't say good or great or dominant. I just said better. There were def definitive signs that they could be a better defense than last year. Not hard. That's a low bar. But they had some size and physicality up there in the front seven. They were faster. They tackled better at times in the open field. So I was like, okay, while it's not perfect, I think that there are elements here to build on for this defense and Lincoln Riley. That's going to be important because when, when you look down the road, you know, they're going to face some incredible offenses and get themselves into some games where that defense is going to have to make stops. I, it's not that I take issue with, it's just, I think that some of the the problems with USC, listen, allergic to tackling, that's fixed with personnel. Okay, so there's three things that you have to evaluate. There's coaching, there's there's scheme, and there's personnel. They've clearly tried to address the personnel. Now you got to look at like coaching and scheme. All right, I thought that the scheme was sound. Now there are times, let's just take for example, they allowed a third and 22 to be picked up by a quarterback scramble in the first half. That drive ended up, in the end zone. Okay. So this drive leads to a TD that should never happen. A third and 22 at any point should never be converted. Okay. And it's my belief that defenses in general, and I think that USC falls into this at times, they play too aggressive. And when you play too aggressive, you leave your players on island islands and, and you magnify small mistakes. When you play high risk, high reward defense, everything is magnified. One gap responsibility not fit in the run game is going to cause a big play. One missed tackle is going to cause a big play. You get you get my drift. And so when you're in a, a third and 22 scenario, that's not time to be aggressive. Now, there is a school of thought that you want to blitz and you want to try to force the quarterback to um, maybe increase his timing and maybe get the ball out of his hands and rally up and make the tackle. But that type of pressure would be more of a zone pressure where you're maintaining your levels of defense. The more aggressive that you play, the less levels that you have. The less levels that you have, the less safety net you have. Okay, so when you're in third and 22, it's fine to be aggressive, but maintain your levels so that those levels can then catch mistakes and then you can get the ball to the ground, you can force a punt, and you can move on because the name of the game for them is stealing possessions for their offense. They did it so well last year in the name of turnovers well a third and 22 is basically a turnover in modern college football you got to get off the field some of that is scheme and play selection related they move a lot up front stem stunt do all these different things and then they can play aggressively at times and and at times too aggressively 
If you look at some of the best defenses in the country, yes, they've got great talent and they can just sit there and play defense. But also what they're doing is that they're forcing the offense to execute a higher number of times in order to score rather than giving them the option to magnify a small mistake and get a big play. So philosophy could be playing into this. And if you've got a great offense like they do and might be exceptional, which I'll get into in a moment, then they might need to look at philosophy as well. They've clearly addressed the personnel. I think they were bigger up front. They were more physical up front. They were faster at times. They tackled better at times. Now they need to address some of that schematic n- nature. How aggressive are you playing? How 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 much are you magnifying the mistakes that your defense makes? Um, and how much are you not magnifying how much are you giving your defense outs uh, when they do make small mistakes so that's the defensive takeaway from me now let's go to the offensive side of the ball behind him is austin jones and a new set of downs as the ball is dropped caleb picks it up trying to make something happen throws long and it is complete and to the 30 the 20 the 15 10 5 and touchdown usc taj washington Something out of nothing. It was a fumbled snap. Caleb went back. Most coaches will tell you to fall on the ball. Not Caleb Williams. Not Mr. Heisman Trophy. Picks it up and throws a touchdown pass. How do you do? All right, now let's talk about that offensive side. Um, Sensational. Sensational. And we shouldn't have thought any different. Caleb Williams was terrific. I thought he he tried at times. I I felt like he was trying to to not not prove, but develop more from in the pocket we know what he does outside of the pocket and he's not going to be listen to say that he like needs to be a better pocket passer is minimizing his ability i felt like he was making a concerted effort to control the game from the pocket which is great which is great um he didn't have to be outstanding except for that one play which you heard he drops the ball and then bam it's just like you know God turned his right arm into a thunderbolt. Like the the guy is just special and, and and he creates a touchdown. So the offense was 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 solid. The run game was was solid. Um now let's talk about the guy who stole the show. The incumbent Heisman Trophy winner is is on the field. Presumptive number one pick is on the field. Bunch of really good players that had been there before, transfers, established college players, they were there. And who was the best player on the field on Saturday night? The true freshman in his first college game. Zachariah Branch. Whoa. Um, I was talking with a, a, a few different guys. Um, all former players, you know, and I, and I text with them. We all watch games and we all and all of us said, like, there are moments and players. I should say, I should say it like this. There are players that all you need is one play to watch them live. And you're like, yep, that's it. Whatever it is, that's it. That's Zachariah Branch. That guy can absolutely move. His kick return was exquisite. The patience, he he basically like takes a couple of steps slowly, then explodes. He's at sixth gear right away. And then all of a sudden, without breaking stride, he kind of like mini hurdles the guy and then breaks left, cuts back. His vision was outstanding. The explosiveness was like through the roof. Mark my words. Lincoln Riley is going to have a field day with Zachariah Branch. This is the perfect type of player for a guy like Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley a few years ago got in 28 different formations in the first 30 snaps against Texas in the Red River uh, shootout. Right. Like this is what he does. Jordan Addison in the backfield last year against UCLA on a wheel route like that. He is going to create so many different issues for defenses with Zachariah Branch. This is going to be so fun to watch. And and I have not seen I have not seen a true freshman like this in a long time. This is like mini Tyreek Hill on the college football field. This dude is lightning in a bottle. And if he doesn't score every game, I think it's going to be a, a total upset. Because every time his hands touch the ball, I was immediately holding my breath. Like, what's he gonna do? 
What's he going to do? The cutback, the suddenness, the burst. It was sensational. And by the way, game not too big for the guy. I know it's just San Jose State, but he's playing in the Coliseum for the first time. Number one wide receiver recruit in, uh, recruit in the country, country, excuse me. And he comes in there and he scores a touchdown. And he's just like, yeah, like I've known I was going to do this my whole life. Buddy, Zachariah, that's what it's supposed to look like. Right, right there. That is what it's supposed to look like. So USC fans should be very excited for their offense, as you kind of knew that you should be. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.